Okay. Welcome to our Genius Now Extravaganza. This is our order. Ian, you are up first. Would you guys like the lights on or off? I feel like sometimes you can see a little bit better. Mine will be hard to see. With the lights off. Let's see what this looks like. So you're like, we're now sitting in the dark. Is that too dark? I feel like it's a dark day today. No. Oh, no, 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 no. lights up here. Yeah, Ian, you feel good about this lighting, or would you like? Yeah, no, I think it's okay. More like, we need like a half light. We need dimmers in here. I feel like your presentation looks better like that. Okay. Cool. Ian, you are up. You're in order to change your PowerPoint. You can just click the board. Smart board. Uh, yeah. Um. Oh, I guess I get started. Um, I'm sure right now you started to wonder what this oblong thing on my shoulder is and what this bag of things are right now. So I'm, I'm just going to start to explain that to you. Oh, there. Uh, my initial idea, so I started out thinking I wanted to do origami for my Genius Hour project. Uh, I was basically just going to make creations out of origami and just do whatever I wanted. That wasn't really a good idea. I didn't have enough to elaborate on. I couldn't really go anywhere with that idea. So I, me and Mr. Malka decided it would be a good idea to expand my project to uh, knitting. And I was going to do as many things as possible and I guess just have fun with it. And so that, that was my baseline idea. And so let's, I'm not going to uh, insult your intelligence by explaining to you what knitting is, but just so everybody has a basic understanding, it's essentially using the iron needles and you slowly make these, uh, in, these patterns and you slowly, um, you slowly lay more rows and rows upon each other until you get a scarf or a hat or a rug or whatever whatever you want. Origami, pretty much the same, not, not the same, um, pretty much um, basic. Uh, it's an ancient Japanese art form. You use paper, you fold it or bend it into different ways. You mostly fold and bend, but you can also do some cutting and whatnot. You can make swans, you can make sharks, little hummingbirds. And uh, this is going to be the uh, second part of, of my entire project. Um, so for my pitch, uh, did, I, did I get the green light? Yes, yes I did. In fact, I was so gung-ho and uh, ready to start. I actually started a month ahead of schedule. So now I have a month extra work to uh, show for myself. So yeah, epic. Uh, my plan. Um, I started to, I was going to alternate weeks where I would do one week where I was doing origami, then one week where I was doing this. And so uh, my schedule was going to be Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, where I was going to be doing something. And th Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, I was going to be taking it off. I was going to work from 5.30 to 6 on those days I had on. And sometimes I would even like online knitting because it took a little bit extra work. I would actually even um, work on the weekends and do some extra work on my own time. Um, for my origami end result, when it all came to end about a couple, like one or two weeks ago, I um, I, I, didn't, uh, I made only, I, I didn't make um, only six things. I made butterflies, hummingbirds, cranes, shurikens, doves, dinosaurs, made little fishies, some more birds. Um, but yeah, no, I made multiple different of everything, so I don't have just six things. I maybe have like 10 or 20 of those six different things. So yeah, no, it was good. I also, I also made one of these, pretty cool, I can throw it at people. Um, for my knitting, I didn't have as much, but what I got done, I have two stars. This one, it looked like a Dorito, so, but I, I can make it into like a wizard hat. Um, <clears throat> the other one isn't finished, mainly because as I said, um, knitting just takes more time. Than it just takes a lot more effort to do. And so I wasn't necessarily able to get that much done. And plus, as you can see, I wasn't really doing it correctly with my Dorito scarf. Um, what did I learn? Um, well, many, mainly I learned patience because these things, you know, they can take a long time. And so you have to just uh, bear in mind the process and, you know, just uh, have respect for all that. Um, you have to work hard also because sometimes, you know, these kinds of things, it requires you to put in a lot of time and effort for things that, you know, you, you might not want to do because, you know, Knitting might be great, but sitting on the couch and eating chips might be a lot better, you know? Um, you know, so I always need to keep in mind that I had to work hard, you know? I also, you know, responsibility. I have to stay accountable for myself. I, I feel like I did a pretty good job of this, but <clears throat> towards the end, I started, started to fall loose and 
my uh, my focus turned to the slip through the cracks. Um, in the end, uh, this wasn't necessarily a challenging project as in I didn't necessarily know what to do. It wasn't necessarily as much of a puzzle. It was more of just a uh, time consuming and I needed to put more work in kind of project. Um, I guess this helped me, you know, I feel a lot better. I guess maybe this Japanese art form, you know, kind of helped me cope with the, the rigors of life. Um, <laughs> You know, I, I guess I could say I feel much better after this project. Um, this project, I guess you could say, was semi-successful. I, I got a bunch of origami stuff down. And it's a pretty cool party trick to make a, a, a paper swan, you know? And, uh, you know, I have this um, Dorito scarf to show for it. But, you know, I am a teenager, and I am bad at everything. Wait, sorry. Um, I'm bad at most um, time management, so I was kind of sidetracked by my tennis season this year. Um, yeah, thank you for listening. Oh, it's okay if I give one of these Yeah! Uh, give one. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, question Dan? Yeah. Uh, what was hard work on here today? Um, they were technically both hard, but in their own, um, both hard in their own, um, way. Um, origami was easier in the sense that I could get a lot more done with the time that I was allowed. But it did not have to save hours and hours and hours of it just to get just to get something like this. This like literally took half of my project time. And so I guess you could say it wasn't necessarily hard, it was just as I said time consuming. It took a lot more time and effort. Uh, yes. Oh okay. why did you choose this project? Um well interestingly enough my uh, we did this thing over Christmas where we would surprise my dad. We would make, we started to make small origami cranes and we would hang them from the ceiling from like strings. And so, so you know, that started to stick and that started to get more and more into origami. And after a while, I was like, hey, cool genius hour idea. Uh, yeah. Oh, why didn't you pick knitting for a separate project? Um, I knew that my mom, a professional old lady, was great at knitting. And I think she could have given me some hands. It was also just also a really cool thing that I wanted to learn how to do because you know scarves are awesome. Uh, Nella, oh sorry. Uh, so did your passion for knitting start on um, finishing this hour, or how you started on knitting for this? Uh, this is my first time. Yeah. Do you plan to continue to knit? Oh yeah, no, something. Uh, yeah, probably like a passion project, and you know something I could do in my free time, especially over the summer with all this free time I'm gonna have. was to volunteer 40 hours at the Mead Food Bank. Um, why? I did this project because I love helping people. I think it brings me uh, people a lot of joy. It brings me a lot of joy. And I wanted to do this project because my original project was helping people, but I wasn't going to be able to do that. So instead, I decided to volunteer 40 hours at the Mead Food Bank. My original project was to feed your homeless children in public schools, I was going to go to Farwell, a local public school in Spokane, and I was going to talk to teachers that knew about children that did not have a home, and I was going to help them, and I was going to give them a chance to learn, like, without having the stress of where they're going to sleep at night. But because of COVID-19, I was not able to pursue that project. Um, I overcame the difficulties by figuring out a new project, 
I knew that I still wanted to pursue helping people, and I got the idea of volunteering at the main food bank. I did this a lot in fifth grade with my friend, and I had the lady's number that ran the food bank, so I tried to text her and see if I could volunteer. And she was very helpful in helping me pick out this project, and so that's how I got started. Um, well, uh, so the meat food bank is, well, of course, a food bank. You can, vol you can volunteer, you can donate food, and you can go there if you do need help with food. It's for families with very low income that cannot pay for food. They can pay for other stuff, they just can't pay for food. So they go to the food bank and they can get fresh produce and bread on the outside and then the inside and the back. They load boxes, canned foods, and frozen goods into boxes and load them into their cars. And that's just, they're so grateful because they don't get the chance to go grocery shopping. So this is like their grocery shopping. Um, yeah. Um, the meat food bank is run by a lady in the study. She's the lady that I texted and I needed to figure out my project. She oversees everything and makes sure it's all running smoothly. Her job is actually the hardest job. She, so the government sends in food. We call it the government food. And every family gets a certain amount of that food. And she has to make sure all the boxes get it. She has to make sure everybody's where they need to be, that none of the people that are getting food are causing trouble, none of the volunteers are causing trouble, because if we get shut down, that would be really bad. Um, she's also been working at the Mead Food Bank for almost 25 years, so she's been running it for a really long time. She doesn't get paid, she, she volunteers to go there, and she's been voluntarily running it for almost 25 years. Um, so this is a picture of our vegetables. So this is kind of like what we load into boxes. This is the veggie section. We have five sections of food that we load into boxes. We weigh it because every person has a different weight amount of food. So that's veggies. This is fruit. And as you can see, that's the chart. So you just show call out how many people we have. And then we go to the chart and let's say it's two people. Two people for fruit is six pounds of food. So we get six pounds worth of food off the shelf. And we go weigh it and put it in boxes and bring it out to their car. Um, this is protein. So proteins like beans, canned chilies, soups, peanut butters, just like protein packed stuff. And that's miscellaneous. It's just like random cooking essential things like marshmallows. We have a lot of sauces. We have like pan spray, mayonnaise, just stuff like that. This is grains. Grains is like your chips, your crackers, your cookies, like um, all that kind of stuff. And then we, of course, always offer gluten free because some of the people that do come there do have allergies and we need to make sure we have food for them. That's Dan. He uh, does the dairy. He wouldn't move for the picture. But in the fridges back there, we keep dairy like eggs, cheese, milk, stuff like that. and. She's loading yogurt into the cart. <laughs> um, my Oprah project, I love doing this project. I love helping people. I thought it was a great learning experience. I really got to know some of the people that worked at the food bank, and I really liked doing it. It was really fun. And I, I'm going to continue volunteering throughout the summer, even though my project's over. I'm not going to be able to do it every week like I've been doing it because I've been volunteering twice a week to get my goal of 40 volunteer hours. But I'm going to still try to do it as much as possible because it's just, it's a great experience and I'm really glad I got to be able to do it. Um, I would like to thank you, my mom for driving me to the food bank and I would also like to thank my dad for driving me to and from the food bank. I would like to help Mr. Mal thank Mr. Malka for looking over my PowerPoint and making sure it was all good. And I would like to thank Miss Betty for allowing me to come and volunteer and making sure um, I got all my hours. She was very punctual about that, always asking me, making sure I was getting everything done. Thank you. Any questions? Well, we are, so it was open from 4 to 7. I usually got there around 3.30, 3.45. We helped bring all the food out, make sure everything was loaded. So it was about 
three, three and a half hours a session. And then on Sundays, we don't do like all the fresh, we don't do all the canned food in the back. On Sundays, we only do uh, out like veggies and bread. And I was usually there for about two hours. So overall, every week I got about five hours. Any more questions? So two of the girls I well, I volunteer with, they're actually graduating this year, so we're doing a little like surprise graduation party. Oh. We all took in some money and we got them like gift card baskets. And we're gonna do this like cake thing, like graduation party thing, because they're graduating. They've been volunteering there since like high freshman year of high school. So that's cool. Do you see yourself volunteering there like all the way through high school? Probably. Also, because it's just, it's good on college applications. Also, because <laughs> I like volunteering. I think it's really fun. Yeah, that's awesome. What was your original thing you were gonna do? Oh, I was gonna tutor homeless children. Oh, are you still gonna try to do that? I'm gonna, okay. I'm, I'm gonna attend that next year, just because I know that there are quite a few kids that don't have homes that go to Faro, mm -hmm. and I know teachers tend to know about that. Yeah. Because I know that kids that don't have a home tend to not worry about school because it's not important to them. It's where right. they're going to eat and have and sleep. Like that is yeah, yeah, so I want to make learning fun for them and like really help them and not go to the ball. That's awesome. Yeah. Super cool. Uh, all right, Selena. Should I just stand up here? Yeah. Right. Do you need me? You guys need me to like try to clear off my little table. That's like a tripping hazard right there. So careful of the tripping hazard. <laughs> That's the last slide. Oh. I feel like this thing's a little slow this morning. It's warming up. It's waking up. It's waking up. It's not even nice. Who can blame them? The So it was August 24th, 2018. I sat around my dining room table with some of my closest friends. We were all playing Dungeons and Dragons. We had a gridded mat spread across the table, all our figurines placed upon it, the largest of which displayed a fierce giant placed in the middle. I almost imagined my character drawing back his bowstring as I rolled the dice. We all shouted in surprise as it rolled the highest number possible. I just smiled as the dungeon master removed the giant from the table. That day remains one of the best days of my life, and Dungeons and Dragons is one of the best games I've ever played. My name is Liam Darcy, and my project is morelord.com, creating a Dungeons & Dragons website. So, this project started with an observation. So, the world went into lockdown, and I began to be more aware of my hobbies, one of which is playing Dungeons & Dragons. And I was baffled as to how few people I knew who actually played the game. So, this project, I decided that I was going to make that change. So, I decided I was going to make a website. Now, why a website? Well, as you're probably aware, most of the uh, information is gathered off the internet uh, in this day and age. And so I decided that my website would be like a good convergence point of internet traffic. So I get a lot of people seeing it. So since I was making a website, that's when I discovered Wix.com. So Wix.com is this free uh, website builder that um, is by far the most popular. 
out of all of them. And it provided a nice, cheap and affordable way to um, create my website. But first, before we continue with my project, what is Dungeons and Dragons exactly? Well, from fighting uh, dragons up fiery volcanoes to delving into the deepest dungeons looking for mountains of gold, Dungeons and Dragons stories spread across infinite possibilities. Imagine and all controlled by your dungeon master. Imagine him as an author. And your players are characters in the story, and you all at attempt to succeed in the overall goal. And your statistics and data are dictated by dice, some of which are 20-sided, 12-sided, and even 100-sided. So that's pretty sick. Oh, wait. So these are some of the calendars I used to say organized with my Genius Time project. So in February, I hardly worked at all. I only worked on like the 40 minutes we had in English. And in March, I really picked up the pace since I was kind of disappointed in myself for February. And I really, that's probably my most productive month. And I got like half my website done in March. And then in April, I didn't work as nearly as little as February, but not as much as March. So how I use my time. So I try to keep this confined to only tutorial. So I really only worked on it during school, but if I was really rolling, I would take it home and work on it for a little while. Um, for my mentor, so I didn't really get any help with like planning my project at all, since I didn't really stay in touch with a mentor at all. We'll get to that later because that was like one of the main watersheds. But yeah, so um, for deadlines and organizational learnings, so I really learned that if you're planning on uh, consistently building something, you want to spread out all of your work time evenly instead of just like all doing it in March and then having like not doing any in February. And that is definitely something I learned. All right. So this is the skeleton of my website. So these are all the notes I took on Word, and these are what I took notes on. So Dungeons and Dragons character creation, how to make your own character, and that's like half the game in, it, in itself. How to make an enjoyable storyline or campaign for different dungeon masters. Since I'm one myself, I often find inspiration from movies and books, so I decided I'd give people a bit of a head start. And different aspects of the game I found confusing at first, such as character creation, since that's often monotonous and misleading. And as the coup de gras, how the game can improve mental health, since that'll give people a little bit of motivation to play it, just besides it being like the best game ever. Um, wait. Okay, so then after I took my notes, I was time for the website. So I used the Wix ADI to create my website. As you can see in the background, it's a lot like this PowerPoint. It's really easy to get the hang of, and once you get once you get rolling, it's it's a breeze. Um, and I added lots of visual elements since most a lot of people rely on visuals to enhance their understanding and um, it really fleshed out the text. I kept the writing concise and humorous since the people that write D, &D books are kind of boring. So I decided to keep to amuse my audience and myself. Um, and Wix presented some difficulties. So this thing kind of sucks. Um, it was kind of really laggy and I kind of and it definitely tested my patience. Um, I had a kind of a grudge against it because it almost deleted my website at one point. I was kind of mad about that. Um, but yeah, overall, I learned some patience, but I, it definitely provided a reward well, uh, well worth it. All right, so objectives and final results. So I wanted to create something that inspired and taught people to play this game. And in a way, I did. And I accomplished the goal of making it a source for D&D information. But my website, since it doesn't have a very professional URL, which uh, so that means that hardly any people are actually going to see it. Um, in order to actually direct people to it, you have to pay an exorbitant monthly subscription. And I didn't really think it was worth it. So it was kind of the website accomplished its goal, but it never really did anything. So I learned that this project is something I took as a solo path since I, I didn't really stay in touch with the mentor at all. And I didn't really feel like I needed to, honestly. Um, and I'm more of an independent worker myself. And yeah, my website turned out awesome, and I'm pretty proud of it. Continuing to pursue this project. So I don't think I'm actually going to continue this project as it is. I know Dungeons & Dragons is going to be my religion until like the end of time. But um, I'm thinking just like waiting for like bigger franchises to make it popular, like the show Stranger Things. That got a lot of people into it. Um, and my biggest triumph is just learning something new and finding success. And I'm really glad I learned this new skill and became more familiar with technology in general. And yeah, there's the link to my website. Um, and yeah, uh, any questions? So what does your website exactly do? Can I click on this plan? Uh, so I tried to do this on another computer, but it kind of failed. 
Uh, you could try copy and pasting it, but. Okay. Um, you mean you can't say yeah, so what it exactly does is it just gives people like tips and ideas about the game, like for beginners to pros, like it just like how, like how to create better stories, how to create your own character, like what exactly it is, stuff like that. Yeah. You share this website with many of your I have shared it with my some of my family, but the the only way you can really I got the, got this to people is by telling them since people can't really find it on their own. But yeah, I can share it with some people. Uh, so I if it did make its way out, I definitely think it would be quite, uh, it would get people interested in it, since I made it kind of like light and humorous and we would kind of like inspire people. So yeah, I definitely think it would have been successful if, oh yeah, here it is. This is awesome! Um, yeah, you can just scroll down. So here's some of my, what, my website, uh, like what is D&D, &D? and um, yeah, I definitely think it would have gotten people into it if it worked. I've been playing for about three years. Um, my friend Joey got me into it a, a while ago, and uh, I practically devoted my entire life's cause to it. Um, but just joking. But um, yeah, I started about three years ago, and I've been like crazy into it since. Have you gotten more people into it? Any sense created? Definitely. Uh, most people I know, I have got like most of my friends play it at this point, and I've gotten a lot of people into it so far. But yeah, um, that was one thing I was going to bring up for continuing it. I think I'm just going to keep spreading the word. I mean, a website probably isn't going to do the trick, but. Can I click on anything? Thanks. No, this is just like a kind of preview. But you keep scrolling down. Keep scrolling down. Yeah. There's like lots of good info on here. Uh, you typed all of this up, right? Uh -huh. I, I kind of copied and pasted my notes. Sure. And then here are some sources. Okay. Um, these are like the tips, ideas for Dungeon Masters down here. Behind the screen? Yes. And uh, yeah, and then. Awesome. And then here's like this, the, the inspiration part where like it's like inspiration for their different stores and stuff. And. Uh, yeah. I feel like I want to play sessions. Here, here is here's like the therapy part, like how it improves your mental health and stuff. So it like improves teamwork, problem solving, and like your personality. So yeah. And um, did you do research on this or? Yes, I did do lots of research on this. Wow. Um, and then this is my bibliography. Nice, yeah. Yeah. Oh, and then people can submit a review too. Mm -hmm. So that, that's that's the, the whole thing. Um, so do you think Wix, this Wix site was like part of the like you didn't love this platform it sounded like? Yeah, it was kind of annoying. Have you looked into like other platforms? Well, this was the first one I chose because it was like, probably the only one I could find right off the bat that was free. Uh, okay. Um, so yeah. Okay. Very cool. Audience, other questions? Alright. Good job, Nick. I am excited to play Dungeons and Dragons now. <laughs> you all used to bring games. Yeah. I play Catan. Can you play Catan? I feel like it might be like the simpler version of Dungeons and Genius Hour project was to learn Japanese. So, like, um, in the beginning, it was kind of hard for me to find a good way to memorize most of the characters. 
and words. Um, I could move under the way, uh, effective way of studying with the app I use it, which is called Bunpup, because for some reason I was stupid and didn't use Duolingo. Um, and the way I was learning words was very effective, and they weren't really words that I would need to use. This is like the, these are the vowels. So my first motivation was from like three years ago when I tried to learn Japanese. And it was so I didn't have to read the subtitles on anime, basically. But over the few years where I tried but completely failed, it became a fascination of the language. Um, but yeah. Um, uh, I learned these words. Sushi, which is sushi. Red, which is aka. High school, which is koko. Autumn, which is aki. Station, which is eki. Color or expensive, which is tekai. World, which is sekai. Moon, which is suki. Subway, which is chikata. Yeah, chikata too. Who are attractive. Not where, what it was. Hotel, which is sound, which is hotel. Alcohol or sake, which is sake. House, which is EA, face, which is uh, how, and please, which is Kesatsu. So, like, in the middle of my project, I lost a little bit of motivation for just a little bit. Um, I did find a better way of studying characters, which is by re redoing the lessons, and I found a better way of studying words by doing the exact same thing. Or, yeah. Um, I did get better at learning new words uh, by using various websites so I could actually get words that I would need or I wanted to know. So I did learn a few phrases, like don't you do, which is how are you, Watoko, which is where is. Watashi no name hadesu, which is my name is. Which is really weird and really long. And um, nani da no, which is what is So, um, basically my first goal was to learn 27 words, but I changed that to a higher number. Um, which I forgot what that number is. Um, I did have a goal for learning characters, but it was a bit difficult because it was still difficult to learn or remember characters easily. So basically, in the end, I, as I said, I changed my goal to be more difficult. Um, I, had trouble studying where um, characters um, and it was difficult to retain even by doing lessons, redoing them. Um, and I'm going to redo this in my own time because I liked my projects um, throughout the time I worked on it. It was enjoyable. And thank you.
probably not. I am very socially awkward. It would have gone absolutely nowhere. Uh, so you talked about that you were learning this for to like, understand anime and not having to read subtitles. Yeah. I guess first, like, do you feel like you can do that any better now? No. No. Still have to read the subtitles? Yep. Okay, my other question kind of with that, do you have any desire to travel to Japan? Yes. Yeah? Have you been there before? Nope. No? Was that like a one day you would like to go? Yeah. All right, good job. Okay, we are at halfway, so that was four of you guys. Um, just a minute, I will give you a five minute break. However, there's still people presenting in the other rooms, so I need you guys to be quiet in the hallway. If you want to chat, you can like come in here and chat. If you need to use the bathroom, fill up water, do those things, and take five. Come back at 9.12. 9 
Uh, but over the time of Jimmy Sauer, I lost the excitement of this project because I procrastinated a lot, mostly because I think COVID was going to mess up a ton of things, and I just wasn't looking forward to hearing the news of like what I can do and can't do. I didn't really want to deal with that. So, and then I also injured myself in around March, so I could not teach the classes for the younger girls, which is what I was uh, doing prior to that. Um, you know, when I got better, then I started teaching again. And now I also never wrote the email to um, talk to charities. I was like halfway through it, and I just never finished it. <laughs> so then, towards the end. I have um, getting ballot, which is the new class I teach. I have a performance with them in a few weeks. And I still have all the money from last year, which is where I made dolls and things to sold them. And I still have that money for um, summer's chance to dance, so I'm still going to be taking this project maybe into the summer. And if not this summer, definitely next summer. I'm kind of busy this summer and we're moving, so it's gonna be a little hectic. So definitely it's definitely going to happen, just maybe not this um, year. So, uh, why chance to do this? So, I love dancing, so you can probably tell. It's been a, like a big part of my life, and I just kind of want to share that. Um, yeah, so over the progress of Genius Hour, my motivation started to change. So, it was like not, no longer very fun. Like, it just seemed kind of like a burden and something I felt like I had to do rather than something I wanted to do, which is what Kimi is not about. <laughs> um, and with the move, it just kind of felt crazy and then like COVID didn't help. <laughs> so what I do is probably again if I had the opportunity. No. <laughs> um, I feel like I did kind of what I had to do to feel like accomplished in this project, we say. And I just would try and like find other things to do. So learning moments. So the most important lesson for me is probably time management because without time management, you've got time. <laughs> um, so definitely, and how I uh, looking back, I realized I learned how I learned that I learned the lesson of time management was and procrastination, which is a huge one too was looking back now and realized all the things that I could have accomplished if I wouldn't have procrastinated and if I would have managed my time um, wisely. So what would I do differently next year? Manage time and don't wait to do something. I wouldn't wait to send an email. I wouldn't wait to like get in contact. I would just do it because when you procrastinate once, it just starts to build up. <laughs> And so yeah, why I got the results I did was because of the two things I didn't do up there. And yeah, I can explain why did I procrastinate because of COVID. And uh, the, uh, the lessons that I learned that I would find in the future are talking to adults, which I did with Colin and Stephanie, which was kind of stressful. I don't like talking to adults when it comes to like business type matters per se. I just find it kind of Kind of stressful, but I can't apply these lessons in jobs, in you know any aspect of life really. So my initial goals were to teach the classes with all the proper um, ballet things, the guitars, tights, hair stuff. Um, so yeah, I did not meet many of my goals, but I did learn how to teach, and I did learn um, I did teach, and now I'm just kind of cutting up. And what got away my progress, procrastination, and COVID. So some successes of mine, I taught the ballet classes, I learned how to talk to adults, and I learned the importance of time management. Thank you for listening. Do you have an idea of how many classes you might have taught? Yeah, I'd be around like they said that you said that online was a possible option. What do you think that would have been like if you could do that? I 
felt like um, if I had in mind that was going to happen, would have been I would have like gone into Catholic charities, had everybody find a way to set them up with the Zoom that I would start, and I would essentially just do it through Zoom, possibly at my dance studio because you know it's like a big area, and um, you could set it up from the dance studio and then um, the house. Yeah. Um. So you, I know there's some like bumps along the way, but do you like enjoy the teaching, or were you like you were like I don't know if I do this project again? Was it because of like the teaching, and because of the logistics? Um, well, definitely not the teaching. I was actually looking forward to teaching and to like helping them. It was mostly because I don't want to go through it again. <laughs> like, yeah, I feel like I got a similar result last year. I mean, last year I did a like, lot more, but. It's mostly just because, like, I don't know, I feel like I've already done what I could do for, like, genius art wise with chance to dance. Mm -hmm. And, like, I don't know, I just feel like I could do a lot more things that are a lot easier in a way. Like, things I could just do at home rather than emails and purchasing things and selling things. It's like a lot of elements mm -hmm. that go into like, one project. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we do talk boys and girls, and like what ages? Oh uh, yeah, I've been boys and girls ages like I don't know, it's like four to seven or so. All right, good job, Ethan. And then your name. So mine would be Menezevet Lindsay. And my project is learning Russian. Okay, so this is basically the basics of learning Russian. Hello is please yet. And then go goodbye right here is Das Vidanya. And then how you say like hello is Pakta. And then how you say hello is everything is Pakta. And how you answer that is so say uh, good is a uh, horror show. And then bad is bora. So those are like the basics to Russian. There you go. So this is like kind of like Duolingo because Duolingo is the one that I use to learn Russian. So this is kind of like what the format's like. You kind of you have like the different lessons here. Then you can scroll and take tests and. This is kind of like how many like lessons you've done. So this is my Russian page, and yeah. So what I learned is Russian is a hard language to learn. It is not as easy as I thought it would be. I also learned uh, that Russian is like a good side thing. Like I'm not going to do this project next year because it's hard to like devote yourself to learning a language because you're busy with a lot of other stuff, and so I kind of, um, I'm good at procrastinating and I learned that, that it's hard to get yourself to enjoy learning a different language because it's harder and like, you just think it's going to be easier than what I thought it was. So my successes was, I got through like two full levels of Duolingo, which I thought was pretty good because like, it was like level one and level two. And then I made it to the end of the year. So I think that's, that's an accomplishment for me. 
And I did learn some Russian, not as much as I like, but I did learn some things. And my failures is I did not like go as far as I would have hoped, but that's all part part of the learning experience. And I did not stay focused well. I did uh, I, I learned like I did like maybe once or twice a week, which I should have done a lot more of that. So, so. So here are some, uh, so about in April, I emailed Rachel, who was like my mentor, and she kind of, I'm like, so what are other ways I can learn Russian? And she gave me like these Russian videos to help me learn Russian, and I kind of like get some other basic feel to it. So I've been like watching those, like reference, eh, like referencing those. So here are some of the videos. Okay. So. I'd like to say thank you to Rachel because she was helping me do this project and she was really busy. If you guys don't know who Rachel is, she is a Spanish teacher in the lower school and she's also fluent in Russian, so. Yeah, questions? Lisa. Why out of like all the ways to teach you Russian? Uh, because I kind of, Hmm. Well, I want to be in the CIA when I'm older. Basically, it's this organization where you kind of like go around the country and kind of like, not like fight, but like kind of like take down terrorists. And I wanted to learn Russian because I thought it was a really cool language and I thought it'd be a good challenge for me, which it was. Liam. Did you end up learning the Russian alphabet? I tried and I failed. It was just really complicated for me and my small brain couldn't handle it. It looks like a hard one because it's not like, like Spanish is like one yeah. of like the romance languages where they're like fairly similar. Like the letters even just on this one look. Because like P looks like an N. Yeah. You can true. see. So, very difficult. Uh, one other thing which is are there other languages you want to learn, I guess? Uh, yeah, I want to learn French, Russian, Chinese, Spanish, and then this one language I always forget, but my dad said I should learn it. <laughs> After going through this process, how do you think you would go about learning those other languages? Well, I mean, I'm taking Spanish next year and like all throughout high school, so I think that helps. Because it's a lot easier learning languages in person than off the screen. Because I did learn quite a bit Chinese this year uh, from changing. Mm -hmm. And so it's a lot easier in person because they can help you. They have questions. And if you have questions on an app, you can't really get a lot of help from it. And yeah, in French, I have one of my friends, she's fluent in French, so she could help me, Danny. So, cool. Yeah. Great job. Should I just go? Yeah, go ahead. Hi everyone, uh, my name is Gan Sanborn, and this is my GSR project, The Elon Musk by, uh, by me. Yeah. So, first off, the most important question is, what even is The Elon Musk? I'm so glad you didn't ask. Uh, basically, The Elon Musk is a series of car fresheners based on things relating to or connected to Elon Musk. They are also fully packaged products, so they like they look like they can be sold in stores, and uh, that's that's all you really uh, need to know. Uh, let's just continue on here. Uh, why the Elon Musk? Why even do this project? Well, uh, I thought it was a very interesting idea, and I think Genius Hour is a, is a perfect place for interesting ideas. Uh, I also thought it was an idea that I wouldn't get bored while I was making and doing it because. I've had that problem in the past uh, in these hours where I kind of just give up 
uh, halfway through. So I thought I wouldn't get bored while doing this. And I thought that this project had lots of potential. Now let's get on to my objectives for the project. First, I had to figure out how to actually make a car freshener. Uh, then uh, what I wanted to do was make at least three car fresheners based on Elon Musk. Uh, once I made the three car fresheners, I wanted to make a website to go along with the car fresheners. If you're wondering, no, I'm not selling these car fresheners, as I'm pretty sure that's, oh, that's a, you need a firm book for that, wow. Uh, I'm pretty sure that's illegal, and I don't want to add that onto my already long list of illegal things I've done. Uh, anyways, let's go on to the actual products themselves. Uh, the, uh, first off, Elon Musk himself. You can't have Elon Musk without Elon Musk. So there his, there's his beautiful face. Beautiful. Uh, let's go on to the second one. Tesla, uh, and another thing relating to Elon Musk. Uh, I just chose Cybertruck for this. As Cybertruck and Tesla, it's very widely known. So I thought I might as well do that. And then for my third one, I, uh, I did SpaceX. And I know it's not a rocket ship. It looks like an egg. It's a shuttle flight. It looks like an egg. But sometimes you can't have a rocket ship. The next best thing is an egg. All right, now let's go back to my objectives. Did I figure out how to make a car first? Yes, I did. Uh, and, and the way I actually did that uh, and achieved that was I combined uh, felt uh, with uh, wax paper and I printed out images of Elon Musk. I cut it out image, uh, the images of Elon Musk. And then I, uh, I glued him onto the wax paper and then onto the felt. And then on the felt, I used essential oils to make the smell. Uh, I used uh, two different types of uh, scents, uh, different uh, essential oils. Uh, they were both labeled musk, but they smelled different. Uh, did I make three car fresheners based on Elon Musk? Uh, yes, you just saw them. And did I make a website for these car fresheners? Uh, yes, I did, which you will see pretty soon. Uh, but uh, right here is an image of Elon Musk actually hanging up in my in my parents' car. And then this is an image uh, of the website. For some reason, I didn't realize how small that would be, but you know what? It's there. So I'm happy with it. All right, now things I could improve on, uh, that fitting could be improved on, whatever. Anyways, uh, things I could improve on. I, uh, I, I could always, I could have tried to make more than three car fresheners. Uh, three is a pretty small amount. I could have gone for more, five, 10, somewhere between 10, wh whatever. Uh, I could have tried adding different scents to these car fresheners because it was mainly just a musk type scent that at least that's what it was labeled as. Uh, and so I could have personalized them a bit more. And I think that I could always improve on my time management skills as uh, what happens in a lot of these Genius Hour projects is I end up doing most of the work in the last few months. So, but overall, I thought it was a pretty good experience. Thank you for listening. Questions. <laughs> oh, also, I almost forgot. I actually have one. So. Uh, these, let me listen to the clock, you know? If I can actually get this final one out. Uh, so basically, the SpaceX and the uh, Tesla are packaged as normal, but you can actually take the Elon Musk one out. And I have no idea how you try to smell this, but I can promise you it does smell, so I don't know if you want to look at that. I don't know how you smell them, but you could attempt. <laughs> how did you make the packaging for it? Uh, I, we just kind of printed them out. <laughs> it's actually a pretty good uh, frisbee. We printed uh, them out uh, on, uh, on printers, and then I basically went to an arts and crafts store, and I got a plastic for it. Ah. And uh, yeah, but we, uh, we made the images in Photoshop. So, uh, and then you have to just like put them in and go through the staple? Uh, yeah. Wow. Yeah. So, yeah, that's that doesn't happen. Why did you choose this project? I think you got a few questions. Why, yeah, yeah I'll, I'll, uh, sorry. Uh, why did I choose this project? Well, that, that's a pretty good question. Uh, I was kind of running out of ideas for a uh, genius hour, and my deadline was coming up. <laughs> and so, my mom made a joke about Elon like Musk and Elon Musk as a pun, and I took it seriously, and I went with it, and that's how I ended up here.
So yeah, uh, Ian, you, you. Is there a way of telling what the other smell like? Is there a specific uh, smell? Uh, well, um, you can you can smell them <laughs> if you really wanted to, but they're uh, pretty much encased in the packaging right here. Uh, the only one that isn't encased fully is uh, the Elon Musk one to demo it. Uh, so if you wanted to, you could you could. Oh god. <laughs> If you want to even smell these ones, it's just that you have to ruin the packaging to open them up. Uh, I, you again? Yes. Okay. Um, is there also another way to buy them without buying them? Ah, ah, so you want to buy, I could lend them to you for a, an exchange of money. <laughs> That's not illegal. <laughs> it's just, a, we're just lending each other stuff. Yes. <laughs> Uh, Jim, do you see yourself like continuing to move this project forward, like getting a bit, like however to make it legal so you could sell them? Uh, well, uh, I, you know, honestly, I didn't really think about that. I was just planning on getting the car fresheners done and getting all this uh, done. I maybe in the future, as I might continue this, but right now I'm very content. Okay. Right. I mean, if you wanted, I feel like there was someone who did an Etsy page, a sixth grader, you could pursue that if you were so inclined. Yeah, I just feel like Elon Musk would look one day and see his face on that's a and ask what was going on. Thank you. <laughs> you. Uh, what's the list of illegal things Gannon has done? Oh, we, 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 we won't go back to that. It's, it's not my okay. <laughs> uh, Oh, we're going to have to go back to all this. Uh, uh, you can read that. It's not not much. Um, you really wanted. You really wanted to. It's really not much. Uh, but you put milk in before cereal. Yes, I did. I, That's I'm, your question. What is that? I'm ashamed of myself too. I'm ashamed of myself too. I'm sorry. She's popular, man. No, I'm a disappointment. All right. Any other questions? Anyway, what else? Yeah, 
Okay, um, so I have a problem on basketball shoe and your feet is, is so the heel of the shoe you can't, you can't do the heel of the shoe. Well, I made a barrel way to make clear the heel and you put the, the heel in the, best, in the basketball shoe. Oh, um, and then for Jackson, I did this on Parker, he saw me this shoe. So, one thing I learned about this project is you don't just start drawing on ideas. You have to, um, you have to process it up. You have, to, you have to find a problem, have to have a goal, you have to connect with the shoe designer at Nike, you have to design a shoe. That's everyone's favorite part. It's like the tree, after you guys used to it. It's a tree. But, that was when I was like, excited. can you just start now? But, my mentor, CJ Michael, he works at Nike right now, he's a shoe designer. And he told me they have to have a problem, have a goal, and and I really was like, really trying to do this right now. Um, do we have to do it? Can we just go to the design issue right like, now? So, and my other mentor, I have two mentors, was Greg Boot. He was a former head of Nike shoe development, international shoe developing. And he taught me about the triad. The triad is marketing, developer, and design. Designer creates the inspiration. Developer builds the 2D and 3D models, and marketing delivers the brief and creates um, sales campaigns. So, that's okay. You can leave it now. Um, and, oh, so, and also, okay. Let me start. So, my my problem was you can't hear you in your shoe. So I, my goal was to create a basketball shoe that's easier to put on, but it's supported to the heel. And then I had weekly meetings with via Zoom with my mentor, CJ Michael. There's a picture of me and then my our last meeting. Um, and then step four, yeah, yeah, I had to make two multiple days. Let me make this way for you. Two D designs, multiple. Multiple 2D designs to then you choose every your favorite part of each shoe. Then when you're done with that, you 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 choose your colors and you make a last. You make a last. So it's like when you go to you see like a mannequin, like there's a big foot, that's a last. So um so like right here an example of blew up. I sprayed foam into it to make a last and blew up my garage refrigerator and there got stuff all over it. Um and I didn't clean up. That was sad. Um it was and then when you don't say you masking masking tape masking tape around it. And then and then you you choose, you find the material, you cut out the stencils. These are my stencils that I have for my shoe. These are the main parts. This one didn't really matter because I, I don't, he didn't, my mentor needs to be, teach me how to make a pencil because it takes machines at Nike. Yeah, um, then you, and then you would choose your, your favorite, you would buy materials that you love, your favorite materials that you go to like, like material stores and then well, I had been finding my mentor CDs materials and they said, wow, these ones. Uh, there's a reason why I chose these ones. I mean, he sent me like 50 of them, so I chose certain ones. But at the end, this is how my shoe ended up like. One thing that I actually extra did was making a logo. Some people think that I, I showed my shoe to, but it was Spider-Man. But it's a JJ because I don't know if you can see it, but if you don't see it, it's fine. But I have a real life example. So Greg Bowie had a meeting with him. He actually gave me this Kyrie 7 model shoe to me to compare my shoe with my shoe. Another one that I have is like each part of the Kyrie 
the shoe. I cannot use that one because that house tag that house have parts of the drawing, so if they fall off, I don't know what the ones they are. But at the end, it was successful, and I also thank you for to CJ Michael and Gary Booty for helping me through this project. To my big blue building with my mom and my dad and my papa because he got me in contact with Gary Booty. And thank you for listening. Are you going to continue this project? I don't know. Yeah, I'm still thinking about it. Okay, so I, um, I know you worked with like Nike employees. Have they like seen your shoe that you created? Uh, yes. Um, CJ Michael, yes. Greg Billy, no, because he lives in Brooklyn right now. Because the biggest shoe, uh, the biggest Nike store is there in Portland, Oregon. Uh, so, are you going to plan on making a shoe that you can actually wear? Um, like, uh, for the designs, I'm still thinking about that. I could do anything about that. I'm thinking about that. Any more questions? What was one of the hardest things for you along the way? Artists? Um, I gotta say, um, Stitching is. I had the sew them together. Do you use like needle and thread or like a sewing machine? Needle and thread. Any more questions? I'm pretty sure I can answer any more questions.